every, good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you this evening. My name is Jeff Lamucci. I'm honored to be your Master of Ceremonies this evening. On behalf of the County of Kern and the Kern Economic Development Corporation, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 20th Annual State of the County Dinner. Please stand with me for the presentation of colors by the Kern County Sheriff's Honor Guard. And please join me in welcoming the very talented Christina Scribner to the stage for the singing of our national anthem. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets Christina, thank you very much. Please remain standing as U.S. Army veteran Josh Dannens approaches the stage. Josh was awarded the Bronze Star Medal, a Purple Heart, and a Combat Action Badge for his service, which included time in Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Iraq. This evening, he'll lead us in the salute to the flag of the United States. We salute and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks again to Josh and to the Kern County Sheriff's Honor Guard. You may be seated. I'd like to thank each of you for joining us for the 20th Annual State of the County event. Some of our attendees who've been part of this community for a while might know that the first iteration of this event was long ago known as the Business, Business Outlook Conference and that it was formerly a breakfast event. The Kern County Board of Trade, at the time led by James Jimmy Redumas, introduced the first Business Outlook Conference back in 1988. We've seen many changes over the years, but one element has been constant. Whether it was the Business Outlook Conference or the State of the County Dinner, the Kern County Board of Trade 
was the team that pulled it all together. Until this year, that is, when the baton was handed to the Kern Economic Development Corporation. We'll hear more from them in a moment. For now, I'd love, like to uh, invite the current and past directors of the Kern County Board of Trade to please stand so we can say a big thank you for initiating and continuing this long-standing tradition and for your work to promote the county and our more than $1 billion tourism and film industry. So current and past directors, Kern County Board of Trade, would you stand please so we can say a thank you. We have a special welcome this evening from someone who's familiar to all of us for his work at the local, state, and national level. Congressman and Majority Le Leader Kevin McCarthy sends us this message from Washington. Thank you for allowing me to welcome you to this year's State of the County. When faced with challenges, Kern County show time and again that its industries are in a league of their own. For years, Kern County has ranked among the top agriculture producers in the nation. But while some strive to merely be among the best, Kern strives to be the best. That's why for the first time ever, Kern County was designated the number one agriculture producer, not just in the state, but in the nation. But our success are not limited to agriculture. For Kern County is paving the way in energy. From the oil fields of Taft to the windmills of Tehachapi, all along the solar projects in the Antelope and Indian Wells Valley, we use and innovate upon the natural resources that our county has been blessed with, offering well-paying jobs in the field that Kern County shapes daily. The role that Kern County plays in our nation's defense cannot be overlooked. For the work accomplished at Edwards Air Force Base and China Lake Naval Air Weapons Station raised the bar each and every day to protect both our men and women in uniform as well as our nation as a whole. As your representative, I remain committed to fighting for the interests of all Kern County residents, whether it be unraveling years of business stifling regulation to spur economic growth or fighting to guarantee a new VA outpatient facility in Bakersfield for our hometown heroes. I strive each day to ensure that your voice is represented in Washington. We are here today because we love and care about Kern County. We are here because we are proud of the county we call home and because we want what is best, not only for the present, but also for the future. I look forward to working with all of you to build this future together. Thank you, and God bless. Before we begin tonight's program, I'd like to recognize some folks who are critical to the success of this evening. First, a very special thank you to our friends at Rio Tinto U.S. Borax, this evening's presenting sponsor. Rio Tinto, absolutely. Rio Tinto has been a key partner of this event for eight years. I'd like to invite Garth Sandsness, a member of the Rio Tinto leadership team, to the podium. This is a, a navel. This is what happens when we don't have enough boron in, in the skin. We get split fruit. The inside's growing faster than the outside, so applying certain nutrients with boron on it causes this not to split. So boron is essential in the trees, the production of the fruit, the quality of the fruit. The shift just started in the mine. Everybody's just you know getting out to the equipment and starting to operate it. Borates and the, uh, the element boron is the element that we're after here. Borates are a uh, industrial mineral that's used in over 300 end uses. I enjoy working here knowing that everything we pull out of the mine can affect the end customer. For example, a farmer needs that boron in his soil, but not a lot of the impurities, the clays that is in the mine. 
Just over the hill from us is the San Joaquin Valley, one of the largest suppliers in the world of agriculture, and we're kind of proud to supply them with material that they use locally to help their crops succeed as well. Well, my grandfather moved here in 21, farmed uh, for the people. Now, Central California is probably the largest producer of citrus in the United States. Warren's organic, we put it on like here. So whether we're planted on the ground as a foliage or actually injected into the water, boron is essential for all the plants to grow. We're providing food for the big cities in California. We're providing food for the country. We ship all over this country fresh fruit. And then we're exporting all over the world. We're providing food all over the world. They say that if you got a job that you love, then it's not hardly like a job. Yeah, I believe in that. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Great crowd, thanks for coming out tonight. My name is Garth Sansness, and I'm the Acting Managing Director for U.S. Borax Global Operations out in Boron. We are a part of Rio Tinto, which is the second largest mining company in the world. I hope you enjoyed our video. It's a great showcase of our interaction and relationship with the agricultural sector. Did you know that every one of you in this room gets a little bit of boron every day in your natural diet? Um, Boron is thought to provide um, strong bones and good brain health. And did you know that California almonds and California wine is an excellent source of boron? So please partake. <laughs> but I'm not here to sell you on the magic mineral known as boron. In, in the 1880s, it was peddled as a cure-all for everything from leprosy to cancer. And by the way, you could do your laundry with it too, so isn't that great? <clears throat> no, tonight we're here to talk about our common interests in advancing the state of Kern County. I think we can all agree that the economic cornerstone that we enjoy was laid by our American West ancestors. And as we all know in Kern County, if it's not grown or pumped, it's mined. We're very proud to have been a part of this region for 145 years. It's very fortunate. We started in Death Valley 145 years ago, and for the last 90 years, we've been in East Kern, just outside of Boron. And we continue to deliver Boron, which is an essential mineral to each of our lives. We had the pleasure of celebrating this great anniversary last October at our 20 Mule Team Days Parade in Boron. And we have a short clip that we would like to share with you of that day. It's just an exciting moment. It's like going back in time. Like how many times will you ever see something like this? Um, we are getting ready for our annual 20 Mule Team Day Parade. Boron's nice, it's a little, you know, community. I like how we're such a small town. We have Borax Mine. It's always been a very, very symbiotic relationship between both Boron and the Borax Mine. Everybody knows everybody. It's Rio Tinto is loved by this community. 1973 hired in at the U.S. Borax, and it was made uh, Rio Tinto. Worked there for 38 years. We do what we do and we're successful because of the employees that we have and the communities uh, around us. So having their support is critical for our operation. I'm really looking forward to seeing the mules out here today. The Borax Company used these mule teams to haul their product. This was the only way to get their product out of Death Valley in the 1800s. And it's the history of their company. It's very exciting, especially when you get to the turn. They're so well trained, they jump over the, the center line. Everything went good. Good parade today. There's a good sized crowd. It's good. It's pretty exciting. I got to ride the new wagons and trying to bring back that feeling. I think it's very important. Both Senator Fuller and I have put this resolution together to pay tribute to all the, the great people that have come from this community and that continue to support this community. 
So we're very, very proud of that. We want to thank Rio Tinto and US Borax for their continued investment and the success of this community. I'd like to take this opportunity to publicly thank Senator Fuller and Assemblyman Lackey for helping us celebrate that important milestone last October. You no doubt noticed that we had a, a wave goodbye from our previous managing director, Isabel, and her husband, Claude. Isabel is still with Rio Tinto. Many of you worked with her and interacted with her. Um, she's off to an exciting new adventure in Singapore with our company, so we wish her and Claude all the best. The good news is that we have a strong leadership team in place and we continue dedicated to our purpose that we've fulfilled for the last 90 years out of Boron. Today the mules have been replaced by railroad cars, semi-trucks, ocean-going cargo ships, but people really remain the center of our organization. We employ nearly 800 people at our operation in Boron. We employ everything from millwrights, electricians, supervisors, chemical engineers, mining engineers, and everything in between. So if you know somebody who wants to work for a world-class organization, and we're always looking for our military veterans as well, please visit us on the web at borax.com careers. We do mine differently today than in years by gone by, but we have a strong commitment to the health and safety of our employees, the environment, quality product, efficiency, and our customers around the globe. I mentioned that we have nearly 800 employees out at Boron. We have a, almost 1,000 worldwide. And did you know we serve 500 customers at 1,700 stock points around the globe, and it all starts in East Kern County. Our operation continues to be vibrant and relevant because Boron as in the last 145 years, is essential to modern living. It goes into everything from insulation in your homes, the glass on your iPhones, fertilizer that you just saw in our exhibit, and we even help energy companies extract more oil and gas from their wells. We're very proud of our connection to ag, oil, construction, and sustainable energy. We forged a lot of long-term relationships, and through that, we're able to contribute nearly $150 million to our local economy every single year. Thank you. We, we work hard every day to remain competitive, and when we succeed, all of us in Kern County succeeds as well. So speaking of success, I'd like to close with a short video of a very famous visitor that you all no doubt know, Mr. Jay Leno, for his series on CNBC, Jay Leno's Garage visited us last fall, and he became officially qualified to drive our 240-ton haul trucks. So we would like to leave you with a clip of that uh, fun day. The episode aired on CNBC last week, but please set your DVRs or check out YouTube and you'll find it. So we'll close with that. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the program. Hi, my name is Jay Leno, and I was just out here at the mine, and uh, we got to drive some of the big trucks for my TV show. We're doing a show on high horsepower vehicles, big vehicles, and this is about as big as they get. So everybody here has been great. I met a great group of men and women in the lunchroom today. Had some pretty good pizza. I mean, pizza in a mine isn't normally that great, but it was actually okay. But it was a nice group of folks, and uh, boy, you just do an amazing job out here. Just how clean everything is, how environmentally safe everything is, and uh, just the constant safety precautions. Uh, I imagine that can get annoying, but uh, <laughs> it's amazing how well it works, because uh, everybody seems pretty happy, and uh, boy, it was just a real thrill to meet everybody and uh, see people have real jobs. You know, I don't have a real job. I just tell jokes, but you know, this is a real job. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Absolutely. Well, hello, Jay. Hey, Russ. How you doing? Jay, this is Ross. Enjoy your drive. Okay, so hug it once and then count five seconds and we'll go forward. Okay. Put Push it forward for gear. Forward. There okay. we go. Give her some gas. 
Keep going. Plenty of gas. Yeah. And this thing eats plenty of gas, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> Okay, give it gas, 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 gas. Keep going, there you go. There we go. Huh? Just like driving your old man's Cadillac, right? It's a little smaller than my dad's Cadillac. Yeah. It's amazing how easily it steers. I mean, obviously, if I was steering, but it feels like a mid-60s Chrysler. Yeah, with this load on, we get good suspension. It's like you're floating, huh? Yeah, and how big is our load? 240 tons. This is what they call road-hugging weight. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's amazing. That's fantastic. Garth, thank you again. And thanks to Rio Tinto for being our presenting sponsor this evening. We appreciate it very much. I'd also like to thank our other sponsors without whom this event would not have been possible. Please join me in thanking 8-Minute Energy, the Kern County Rural Haulers Association, and Western States Petroleum Association. Big round of applause for those folks. As I mentioned earlier, coordination of this event has now been entrusted to the Kern Economic Development Corporation. Kern EDC is an essential partner of the county, executing its economic development strategy, marketing the region to businesses outside the area, and partnering with local businesses to pave the way for job creation in Kern County. I'd like to invite Kern EDC President and CEO Richard Chapman to join me on the platform. Richard? Good evening. Um, actually, I do a pretty mean Jay Leno impression, but I've been forbidden for the good of the order to try it out tonight. It, um, it, it is an honor and privilege for a current EDC to host this prestigious event, and especially in light of such a milestone occasion, 20-year anniversary. And um, coincidentally, our, we, a current EDC, is celebrating a uh, key uh, achievement, and it's our 30-year anniversary this year. So thank you. Thank you for all your support. We really appreciate it. And, um, and you'll hear later on, when I leave the stage very soon, uh, the story of the county. It really is a testament to everybody in the room and, and, the, and the, the people that uh, started our organization in 1988. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. Non-millennials remember 1988. <laughs> That's my only millennial joke tonight. Um, and obviously the state of our economy, oil at uh, $9 a barrel, uh, ag prices very low, and the community got together, uh, that public-private partnership had that forward-looking vision, and uh, really we, we've come a long way, and the stats you're gonna hear tonight, kudos to you all in achieving that. Well, I think the video is going to tell a great story tonight, and this is the world premiere, exclusive to this audience. <laughs> so take it away. The Kern Economic Development Corporation is a public-private partnership to retain and recruit high-value jobs for the county, and not just bringing new industries in, but building within. Kern County is an amazing, economically diverse region, and we're actually the number two most diverse economy in the country. We're the number one oil-producing county. We're number one for agriculture in the country, the nation's largest wind and solar farm, aerospace, logistics hub, over 50 centers, healthcare infrastructure that is growing by leaps and bounds. So it's an amazingly rich and diverse. So it's definitely exciting to be leading up that economic development strategy for the county. More jobs and more business means more tax dollars into the county coffers so we can provide the services that our taxpayers expect and deserve. We have gained a reputation 
in Kern County for being the place where people want to come and do business. KADC helps us to tell that story. Over the course of the last several years, they've been working very hard building contacts and relationships out in Eastern Kern, where I represent. You have a lot of involvement with the East Kern Economic Alliance, the Greater Tachapi Economic Development Council, Gavia, the Greater Antelope Valley Economic Alliance, and so KADC is everywhere, continuing to build those relationships and that business coalition. We have incredible innovation here, but how do we commercialize that? Most areas now that are moving forward have a very rich startup environment, and so that's something that we want to inspire people to achieve here. One of the parts of the Advanced Current is building a center for innovation, not just to create startup companies, the next generation of companies, but also a meeting place when people come from out of town. Kern County Economic Summit is in its 18th year, getting government leaders, business leaders to hear about our economy, where our economy is headed. The Energy Summit has been going on for a decade. A lot of the discussion is on how we are the energy capital of the U.S. $30 billion of investment in the last decade. And most of the themes that come out of that are that innovation development and also how all types of energy are keying our success. We had seen a lot of initiatives in the area, you know, the educators, uh, businesses talking about STEM and uh, the students with their programs, but there really wasn't an event where all three parties could convene. You know, the STEM program, what an outstanding first year. But what it really does is teams up those kids that have these great projects that they learn through their school STEM type projects and then brings in business and they get to see, okay, well look, the business is doing this, so they get some interested in that career pathway. Businesses may not even really understand the extent of the STEM-related training that's going on in the schools. Teachers need to understand what business is looking for when they're hiring people. So when those two groups of people, education and business, can get together and really talk about the overarching issues facing our community, then they can develop a path together, we can develop a path together, and that's what this symposium is. Our foundation, Kern Economic Development Foundation, uh, led the charge, but it was an amazing collaboration of those three parties got together. The foundation's role is really to assist the corporation in providing that educational component so we have workforce ready people, which is critically important to attracting and retaining businesses in our county. This day of social media is critical and we have been recognized. This is Kern County. Take a closer look at the campaign. We really hit it out of the park at the state level. Kern Economic Development Corporation. And uh, this year we were wowed by the international EDC selection of us for a silver award for a promotional marketing piece. We have an amazing story to tell, and I love telling it, but we need not just the outside world to know, but even our local folks to be proud of that story and to understand how well we are positioned. It's really a testament to that public-private partnership. So now we roll up our sleeves and really start the hard work. Great work, Rick, uh, great work, Richard, thank you very much. Tonight's theme is modeling excellence. Excellence is indeed modeled in Kern County every day. Whether it's the county's Lean Six Sigma effort or reimagining some of Kern's gems like Hart Park, it's not business as usual among our county leaders. Within the business community, innovation and excellence abound and they can be seen in the skies over East Kern's Mojave Desert, in our region's vast farmlands, throughout our extensive oil and gas and renewable energy projects, and in the 8,000 plus square miles in between. 
Tonight brings together Kern County's leaders from across communities and across industries, public sector and private sector, giving us the opportunity to strengthen our relationship with each other for the good of our community. It's the time for assessing our current standing and our future opportunities, our achievements and our goals. It is my great honor to introduce the person who will do just that, our keynote speaker, Chairman of the Kern County Board of Supervisors, Mike Maggard. Chairman Maggard represents the third supervisorial district that covers areas of East Bakersfield, La Cresta, Northwest Bakersfield, and the north of the river communities of Oildale and Rosedale. A Bakersfield native, Chairman Maggard was elected to the Kern County Board of Supervisors in 2006 to serve the community he is proud to call home. Please join me in welcoming Chairman Mike Maggard. Well, how was dinner? Hope you enjoyed it. Good evening and welcome. I'm delighted that you've all joined us here this evening. Tonight we are, we're gonna celebrate the very best of Kern County. Our common endeavors, our individual enterprise, and most of all, the amazing people who make our home a great place to work and live. I'd like to thank our longtime sponsor, Rio Tinto for once again helping to make this event possible at no expense to the taxpayer. Thank you for that. This year, the State of the County event is being presented by another longtime county partner, the Kern Economic Development, Corp Development Corporation. As you know, KEDC is one of the chief mechanics of our economic engine, as well as our partner in launching the Advanced Kern Initiative that I'll tell you about a bit later. I'd like to start this evening by introducing you to my dear wife, Mary. We've been married for more than 40 years. I might look like it, but she doesn't. <laughs> and throughout this time, uh, she's been my sounding board, my rock, the, the person that I rely upon to always be truthful with me. Uh, thank you for your love and support, Mary. I love you. found the only woman on the planet who could live with me. That was a good move for me. Uh, well, I'm gonna pause for a second here and just introduce the people at my head table. Dr. Horace Mitchell, we're gonna talk about in just a little bit, but Dr. Mitchell's with me. Uh, this is Wendell Vinson, Pastor Wendell Vinson, uh, a great spiritual advisor to me in my life. Thank you for doing the, the invocation tonight. David Kessler from KLEA, thank you for being with us tonight. Jay Tamsey from the Kern Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Michael Caves from the Kern Prosecutors Association. I appreciate you guys being here very, very much. I, I also want to just uh, say thank you to my staff for a moment. I, I don't know what your lives are like, but I have, from the outset as a supervisor, surrounded myself with people who have a servant's heart. They come to work every day trying to help other people fix their problems, and I have a fabulous staff. Cheryl Taylor is here at the table with me. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Evan Henderson is in the back. Guess what? Serving, helping me this evening. So thank you, Evan Hen Henderson in the back. and uh, Jeff Flores, who is my chief of staff, uh, become a real uh, opinion shaper and a, a, a person given a vision to the current high school district. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Among those amazing people of Kern County that we referred to a moment ago are my colleagues on the Board of Supervisors. Representing the first district is Supervisor Mick Gleason. You guys, let's give it up for Mick. Mick promised to make funny faces at me tonight, so appreciate that. <laughs> Supervisor Zach Scrivener represents the second district. Zach. Okay, Zach married well, don't you think? <laughs> and Christina did a great job. Thank you, Christina, for doing that for us. And Zach doesn't know I'm gonna do this, but Tonight happens to be Zach's birthday. So let's give him another round of applause for his birthday. And
in the fourth district with two desserts, I think, is Supervisor David Couch. <laughs> and the fifth district is represented by Supervisor Leticia Perez. Le uh, Supervisor Perez re represents us at the, as the president of the California State Association of Counties, and she is at one of their events this evening. She's going to be called upon to travel a great deal more uh, in this coming year. So she's not here with us this evening, but we are grateful for her service with us as well. <laughs> many other elected officials help lead Kern County uh, through all of the de many decisions that we have to make. Among them are Sheriff Donna Youngblood, District Attorney Lisa Green, Treasurer Tax Collector Jordan Kaufman, Assessor Recorder John Lifquist, and Auditor Controller County Clerk Mary Bedard. If any of you are here this evening with us, would you stand up so we can celebrate and thank you. <laughs> and finally, I'd, I'd like to recognize the people who respond to emergency calls, patch the roads, keep our parks green and clean, check out library books and help people find work and even keep Kern County families healthy and safe. Please join me in thanking all of our fabulous employees for the great job they do each day. Our county workforce is led by a great management team, uh, and the, that, is, that management team is headed by our county administrative officer, Ryan Alsop, who just ended his first year at the helm back here in Kern County where he grew up. Ryan, would you please stand? <laughs> Glad to have you, Ryan. We have a lot of work ahead of us in 2018, and we'll be guided by our three strategic goals in everything we do. Our primary goal is enhancing the quality of life for all Kern County residents. We cannot rest until everyone in Kern County is healthy, safe, and prosperous. To do that, the second goal of the county government is to be a model of excellence in managing our business and also in managing our employees who serve you, the public. As Vince Lombardi once said, if you chase perfection, you will catch excellence. Finally, our board aims to foster a culture of innovation so that working smarter, better, and cheaper becomes a way of life. These goals aren't unique to Kern County or our, gov or our county government. Every community wants a better life for its residents, and every business knows that excellence and innovation are key to survival. But by keeping a laser-like focus on these goals, the county can provide our residents with great government services despite our budget challenges. Now, I'd like to show you some of the great ways people are applying innovation and pursuing excellence to make our life in Kern County better, both in government and through public-private partnerships. Please watch the screens. Um, our mission now is, is way different than it was, you know, five years ago. I think five years ago, our mission of County Animal Services was to just keep our head above the water. And uh, the public didn't really want to come and adopt our animals because they were sick and the shelter was overcrowded and they want to come into a facility that they know is clean. The staff smiles and is happy to do their job and the animals are in good care. Five years ago, we were putting down seven out of every ten animal that came to the facility, 70%. Fast forward to 2017 and we're saving over 70% of the animals that come to us. By law, we have to alter every animal that goes out. What we were doing prior to having a surgery site on the facility is we were outsourcing everything. The surgeries were rather expensive, so I ran the numbers on this and did the cost of what it would take uh, to do surgeries here versus outsourcing them. It was gonna save probably between $75 and $100 per surgery, depending on the animal size of the dog, is a cat or a dog, and we're talking about almost 10,000 animals a year that need to be altered. It should pay for itself by February, which is less than two years. I think that the, the focus that we put on all areas makes me proud. Not just the care that we provide to the animals, but operating more efficiently and trying to save the county dollars and still continue to do a good job. And we, we have instituted some, some programs and some practices and some materials and some equipment that has done that. Grimway Academy uh, offers an alternative to traditional uh, district schools by providing a charter public school option for them. This school, uh, which was founded by Barbara Grimm Marshall of Grimway Farms here in the community of Arvin, and uh, last year uh, opened our second school in the community of Shafter. These schools uh, are committed to providing students a college preparatory curriculum to prepare them for the rigors of college and life. 
We believe that health and wellness is a critical component to a child's academic success. We embed edible education into our academic curriculum, focusing on literacy, technology, and math. As a result, uh, our students outperform their peers on a number of state and national assessments. When our students do leave, over 60% have said that they are making better food options and healthier choices when it comes to their nutrition. So we're quite excited about that outcome as well. The Dream Center is an innovative approach of integrating services and reducing the duplication of services and improving those services for foster youth and emancipated youth in Kern County. We have different agencies here. We have mental health. We have Kern County Probation in the building, Kern County Department of Human Services. We have an HST. We have PHMs that come here to the center. So you technically have everything that they need right here in one center. We've expanded our services. Uh, we now have showers for our youth that need it. Uh, we have a washer and dryer that was donated by the, the Westchester Kiwanis. Uh, we have a clothing bank. Um, they're able to receive snack bags. Uh, sit down and, and fill out a, an application for college with one of the superintendent's school staff. I'm going into school for a mechanic. A lot of the staff here have pushed me and if this place wasn't here, honestly, I think I would still be lost. Because of the leadership of the Board of Supervisors and the County Administrative Office as well as the superintendent's schools, that this is possible. This is different, this is out of the box, but that's what we're known for in Kern County. It's an entrepreneurial approach in providing integrated services that are cost effective with measurable outcomes to really make a difference in the lives of the youth that we serve. Heart Park After Dark started when I noticed that San Diego County offered family free park events, uh, partnered with other county agencies down there. So I started looking into highlighting park services along with library services and how other county departments could be involved. And so we just started moving along, uh, progressing to make this happen in October of 2017. Since it was completely free to the public, they were able to participate in a whole variety of activities. They were able to see county services up close and personal with county staff. And they were able to celebrate Halloween and celebrate parks during a time frame when people don't normally go to parks since it was after dark. One of the biggest jewels in Kern County is Hart Park. So we really wanted to promote the library and promote our departments and provide as many services as we could to our residents. And it was really just a wonderful opportunity for us to show the community what can happen at the park and can happen for family fun for free. Within two months, we were able to pull off this event with close to 2,000 people, so it's pretty extraordinary. 2018 is, is a whole new chapter, and we're looking forward to seeing what that brings in terms of county partnerships, parks, libraries, CAO's office, and other departments. Currently, only 14% of Kern County residents hold a bachelor's degree. Inspired to make a difference and through the generosity of the wonderful company owners, Linda and Stuart Resnick, the Academy opened its doors in 2009 to significantly change the college going trajectory for all students within the Central Valley. Given the right supports and the right learning environment, every student can achieve at a very high level. The state of the art campus boasts small class sizes with the latest technology, math and science cutting edge opportunities for every student, and a focus on health and wellness. Locally, uh, we partner with the wonderful company, Bakersfield College, CSUB, Fresno State, as well as other local middle and high schools, um, including Wasco High School. We could not be more proud. Last year, 75% of the graduating class went off to four-year universities. This year, we're predicting 80%, and we look to build upon the success and share the success so that other students from other communities are able to also obtain the same level of success. Honor Flight transports World War II, Korean War, and Vietnam veterans to Washington, D.C. to visit the memorials built in their honor at no cost to the veteran. We have a wonderful, diverse community that consistently shows an outpouring of love for our veterans. It's phenomenal the hard work that caring, dedicated volunteers put in to make it all possible. I think that it gives them an opportunity to not only face certain aspects of their time in the military that they weren't exactly feeling that great about, but it also gives them a chance to talk about it, that experience of, you know, healing. Kern County is a generous community. When this program launched its first flight out of Kern County, there were several organizations who stepped up to the plate to donate. Since then, thousands of people, including businesses and schools, have supported the program. Several county departments have either supported the program through employee donations, or those employees have raised money to take veteran family members or to serve as guardians for veterans who were complete strangers to them.
aren't those great stories? <laughs> These stories show what can happen when we team our vision, our resources, and our resolve to make a real difference in people's lives. As we know, the resources part of the equation is always limited. So we need to do the absolute best job possible of targeting what we have where it will do the most good. We're in the second year of a four-year plan to cut costs and apply the sparing use of budget reserves to put county finances on a steady keel once again, all while providing great services to you, the public. Our board is deeply committed to this path and thanks to the shared commitment of our department heads and our county employees who deliver frontline services, it's working. We have already cut the structural deficits by more than half and we're staying true to our vision of enhancing the quality of life, modeling excellence in management, and fostering innovation while placing a priority on public safety and our employees who protect us every day. For example, this year's budget set aside more than $7 million for some long overdue ma major maintenance projects, including more than $4 million just in parks and recreation improvements that are spread all around Kern County, up at Lake Isabella, over in Delano, in Tehachapi, Buena Vista Lake, Camp Condor, up in the Kern River Valley, out in Ridgecrest, and even back here in Bakersfield. Quality of life for our residents is paramount. Working with the people of Kern County, we are creating a vision for our county park system to improve recreation for our residents. As you just saw, we've asked the public's help in rediscovering and reinventing Hart Park. I'm looking forward to seeing the changes that Hart Park will have uh, as these public workshops uh, ha have given us a, a game plan for what we should hope to expect in our parks. I want to especially thank the library for leading the Hart Park After Dark event that drew more than 2,000 people last fall. Our public safety employees are stretched way too thin. Accordingly, our budget has funded the second year of a sheriff's academy to train new deputies and we're almost finished with a state-of-the-art criminal justice facility to provide inmates with mental health, education, and job readiness training that will better prepare them for re-entry back into our community. The sheriff is also using a federal grant to expand the use of body cameras to all deputies in the Metro Bakersfield area. By providing an audiovisual record, body cameras increase transparency in law enforcement, they help reduce citizen complaints, and they provide a great way to review field situations and train officers. The budget also enables a fire academy with the goal of full fire department staffing. We have an extraordinary fire department. We want to equip the wonderful men and women in the Kern County Fire Department so that they can continue to provide services that are second to none. It maintains funding for in-home support services and it continues funding for the spay neuter program that is essential to our goal of becoming a no-kill county. Our investment in a surgery suite at the hospital, as you just heard about, uh, at the shelter, rather, on Fruitvale Avenue, is paying off in spades and neuters. <laughs> Since August of 2016, we've conducted more than 6,000 spay-neuter surgeries at the shelter. Doing spay-neuter at the shelter saved Animal Services a quarter of a million dollars just last year, and with the projected savings this year, the surgery suite will more than pay for itself you heard by February, at least by the end of June. Euthanasia in our shelters is now less than 28% of what it was five years ago. But shaving that number closer to zero will require intensifying our efforts. Animal Services is forging animal rescue and adoption groups, local businesses, cities, and the news media into a coalition to push hard toward that goal of saving every animal possible in Kern County. We know how important our county libraries are to the life of our communities. They are centers of learning and literacy for people of all ages. And for many families, they're the only lifeline they have to the internet. Our library system will offer more than 1,600 scheduled classes this year. Activities for children and adults, summer readers, disadvantaged youth, computer learners, and even job hunters. We maintain library hours in this year's budget and found ways to create excellent value with limited investments. The Northeast Bakersfield Library Branch was in danger of closing last year. In July, the library moved its Northeast Branch to a new location that features dedicated programming space, more computers, and more visitors. 
it, it's, it's brought a new enthusiasm to that, that location. And I want to make sure we thank Mary and Greg Bynum, who helped us create uh, a win-win situation so that that location could be put into use and we could reinvigorate the Northeast Branch. In December, the new Tehachapi Branch Library opened, and it's placed in the heart of Tehachapi's very walkable downtown in a newly renovated Masonic Lodge. With more square feet, a community meeting room, and state-of-the-art technology, Tehachapi's new library shows how the county, the city, and the community can come together to create a great asset for everyone. Hey, Tehachapi. <laughs> Investing in infrastructure like the surgery suite, parks, libraries, and public safety facilities is key to maintaining and enhancing our quality of life. But nowhere is the need greater than in transportation. A community that cannot move cannot prosper. County roads will receive a much needed shot in the arm this coming year from the state road funding. And after years of putting band-aids on our declining road system, county road crews and contractors will rebuild and repair damaged roadways all over Kern County, including many that haven't been touched in decades. More than 150 miles of county roadways from Randsburg to Maricopa will receive work. The county is also a partner with KernCog and the City of Bakersfield in the Thomas Roads Improvement Program. $630 million in federal funding, combined with state and local money, is delivering projects that relieve traffic, improve air quality, and help commerce to thrive. Delivering the quality of life that we value so highly re also requires a commitment to constant improvement. Our goals of modeling excellence in management and promoting innovation as a workplace way of life are aimed at giving our employees the best possible chance of succeeding in serving you. We're now more than a year into an effort to infuse county leadership and frontline employees with Lean Six Sigma and peak performance principles. Using Lean Six Sigma, Sigma to change how we approach, design, and execute services, we can make decisions that shore up our fiscal position, erase our structural debt, attract new talent, promote innovation, and develop and reward our workforce. We're getting results. The Dream Center that you just learned about is creating a safe and familiar home for transitioning foster youths who must enter adulthood after having known far too many homes in their young lives. Human Services is using the Boys and Girls Club during off hours to conduct uh, mass family visits. The department offers Friday night movies at the club as part of a court-ordered family visit program. This time together helps broken families repair the bond between children and their parents. I'm very excited about a new program we're, ju program we're just rolling out called Recycling Lives. It's a nonprofit partnership that employs former criminal offenders, the homeless, and people that are suffering from all kinds of disadvantages. We're gonna employ them in the local recycling industry. And their goal is to break the cycle of poverty that traps so many by providing them with jobs and training to pe the very people who need it the worst so that they can get a foothold on that work ladder. Another excellent collaboration is the Family Justice Center where victims of domestic violence can receive counseling, medical help, legal advice, and law enforcement intervention. For years, District Attorney Lisa Green has sought to combine law enforcement and social services with local nonprofit groups at a family justice center. After much anticipation and hard work, the center opens its doors, opened its doors just two weeks ago. Congratulations to the District Attorney and her staff. Behavioral Health and Recovery Services is a wellspring of innovation. Its new Smart 911 program allows Kern County residents to create a Smart 911 profile that automatically provides first responders with a detailed personal uh, list of their health data and any other vital information they think is important in the case of an emergency. Profiles can hold all types of behavioral and other health and personal data, location specifics, and even information about their pets. Kiosks at over 30 points around Kern County let citizens enter their own profiles. Anyone can sign up for free at www.smart911.com. Behavioral Health recently opened a new crisis stabilization unit 
and Ridgecrest that will serve the remote areas of Eastern Kern County. With a designated mental health facility now in place in East Kern, adults with mental health issues can receive the proper care they need instead of being treated in an ER somewhere or even facing the possibility of incarceration. A small but dynamic department that embodies excellence and innovation is Veteran Services. The Kern Patriot Partnership, the Veteran Jobs Initiative funded by Chevron, continues to shatter all metrics. As the partnership enters its third year, 146 different companies have joined us, and some 200 veterans have been hired through the program. And through a, yes, give it up for them. <laughs> and through a partnership with the non-patriot, uh, with the non-profit group, uh, Kern County, pa Patriots of Kern, sorry, Patriots of Kern, Kern County Public Works and Caltrans, all state highways entering into Kern County will soon carry the sign that reads, Kern County, where we honor our veterans. Great, great job. Right now is a good time to recognize all those uh, who are here this evening who had a military service if they're with us this evening. So if you are a current or former member of our nation's armed forces, would you please rise so that we can thank you for your service. Thank you for your service and sacrifice. Our veterans are well served by Director Dick Taylor. As anyone who has worked with him knows, Dick Taylor is a dueler. I'm pretty sure that if he'd stayed in the Marine Corps, by now they'd have their own service academy and they'd likely be playing Alabama for the national championship. <laughs> many, many county departments are doing a heroic job of optimizing services with tightly limited resources. And we can do even better. In year after year of budget cuts, we have asked our 4,500 general employees to stretch dollars and do more with less. Our board appreciates how much our employees do. And last month, we finalized an agreement that balances the need to reward their services within the constraints of our current fiscal condition. I'd like to thank our employer representatives and our county leadership team for finding ways to support our employees without putting the county in a future financial bind. As we continue, there we go, thank you. Give it up for the employees and our management team. I look forward to a time when we can do more to reward them and so that we can keep attracting and retaining our top performers. As I often point out, county resources depend directly upon the health of the private sector. While the county doesn't create wealth, we can do a lot to encourage businesses and industries that do generate wealth with jobs and and encourage them to locate and grow right here, grow those jobs right here in our community. We've been a major partner and contributor for many years with the Kern Economic Development Corporation, with whom we're now launching Advanced Kern, which we told you about a, few, a little while ago, to develop local ideas and attract new businesses. That's the goal. Why? To create a stronger economy. As part of Advanced Kern, our board voted last year to increase tax breaks and remove credit caps to encourage businesses from outside of Kern County to invest in our communities here. Our goal is a healthier and more diverse economy that is less prone to the wide swings of fortune that agriculture and oil experience. Ag and oil will still be the pillars of our economy here in Kern County, but in a fast changing global market, good ideas are golden and we're gonna find them. The Mojave Air and Spaceport is a great example of how the synergy of ideas can work the latest really big idea they have out there is called Straddle Launch. It's a huge twin fuselage aircraft designed to launch large commercial and national security payloads up into the Earth orbit. It has the largest wingspan ever at 385 feet, and it will weigh, get this, 1.3 million pounds when fully loaded. Believe me, Bert Rattan knows how to dream big, and he knows how to build big. Let's give it up for Bert. Also in East Kern, Edwards Air Force Base and China Lake Naval Weapons Air Station continue to give our nation the winning edge in air and sea combat. The county must make sure that wind and solar development doesn't encroach on their critical missions and that China Lake has a sustainable water supply hereafter. Water is always on the minds of our friends up in the Kern River Valley. 
When the Corps of Engineers starts building the new Isabella Dam this year, it should bring an economic boost to the area. But we need to ensure that the Corps maintains the water levels necessary so that tourism is not harmed in the years it will take to build that new dam. The Corps and the Forest Service will also fund a new visitor center that Congressman Kevin McCarthy worked hard to secure for the Kern River Valley. Erskine fire victims received valuable help from the, from the state last year in the gigantic task of debris removal and septic system cleanup so families could begin rebuilding once again. And 28 of those families are being housed in temporary trailers made available to us through the state. Out on the west side, ERA Energy is planning the Bell Ridge Solar Project. It's still in the permitting stages, but when it's built, it will be the largest solar array in all of California. And it will replace the burning of natural gas to heat the Bell Ridge oil fields with thermal solar energy and photovoltaic electricity. The reduced carbon dioxide that it will take out of uh, circulation will equal 80,000 cars off the road. Is that not incredible? Up in northern Kern County, Delano and its surrounding market area are growing at twice the statewide rate. Retail growth is spread among four new commercial developments, and the city is working to attract firms to more than 150 acres of industrial sites. At the south end of the valley, of the county and the valley, is Tahone Ranch, one of the nation's largest stretches of private land and certainly one of the most beautiful. The ranch's careful stewardship of its natural resources took a long-awaited step forward in December when the County Planning Commission approved the specific plan for the Mountain Village at Tahone Ranch. The planned village will have more than 3,000 homes, 160,000 square feet of commercial space, recreational and resort amenities, up to 750 hotel rooms, and more than 130 miles of trails for hikers, horses, and cyclists. The commercial center will provide a taste of what life on Tahone Ranch will be like. Its culinary offerings, artisan markets and boutique lodging will be surrounded by gardens, orchards, and vineyards. The village will be a handsome new southern gateway into Kern County. Last year, this event highlighted several other forward-thinking enterprises born right here in Kern County. And the key to keeping this innovation coming and growing is growing our own innovators and our own skilled workforce, which is one of the central focuses of the Advanced Kern Initiative. We saw tonight how Grimway and wonderful companies, what they're doing to, to help bring quality education to outlying communities in Kern County. Education is a terrific economic engine for both individuals and communities. And two of the best colleges for upward mobility are right here in Kern County. Bakersfield College, which I graduated from, was recently named the top value added community college in all of California. And Cal State University back Bakersfield, of which I'm a graduate, uh, I, I'm, I'm proud of the great job they've done to expand their offerings and uh, their community presence here in our community. It's one of the top schools in the nation at moving disadvantaged students into the middle class. And it's now a Division I athletic school, and its new engineering curriculum is educating some of our very best and brightest minds right here in our own community. Much of the credit for all this goes to CSUB President Dr. Horace Mitchell, who is here with us this evening. <laughs> would, you, would you please rise? Glad you're here, Dr. Dr. Mitchell is retiring April from a brilliant academic career. We rightly honor members of our military when, for their sacrifice, but too often we overlook the quietly important job of preparing people for a life through education. So we're very glad to have you with us tonight. He's one of my academic heroes and I was proud to have you here at our table with us, thank you. Dr. Mitchell's work at uh, CSUB, um, sorry, Dr. Mitchell's work at CSUB shows the great power of higher education, how it helps transform individual lives and expand the economic horizons of our community. It's made a tremendous difference in my own life. It's the great equalizer in our society when people have an education. And what we're excited about is how that's going to unleash our best, unleash the boundless potential of our people. Please know that your Board of Supervisors and county government are committed to giving our very best to you. County finances are not out of the woods just yet, but the path we're on will soon lead us 
to a sustainable financial future. As we work toward that future, there is no better time than now to rethink and reformulate county government, to embrace and deliver smart change. We will chase perfection, and in so doing, we will capture excellence in everything we attempt. The hard work we do today, staying focused on our objectives, creating efficiency, cutting costs, and rethinking the way we conduct our business will pay off in a better value and a better community for all of us who live here. Thank you for being here tonight. May God bless you, and good night. Thank you. And thank you to Jeff for the great job this evening. Thank you, Chairman Maggard, for your comments and for your leadership and for serving us, the residents of Kern County. We appreciate it very much. I'd like to thank each of you for attending this evening. And a very special thank you once again to our sponsors. Now, before you go, tonight's beautiful centerpieces were designed by the Bell Ray, and they are to be taken home tonight by the person at each table who most recently celebrated a birthday. So don't fight too much and be honest. We also hope you enjoyed the addition of the valet parking sponsored by the Kern Economic Development Commission. If you valeted your car, don't forget to have it picked up because you'll be walking to the far points of the, of the, of the uh, parking garage and parking structure. But anyway, plan to join us next year, January 23rd, 2019. Once again, thank you for attending. Have a great evening. Thank you.